Black Lives Matter. Because they do. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives Matter. Black Lives fucking matter. And you know what? When I was in St. Louis, all that energy in the street, we need to bring that here. the same damn problems right. you know and one of the things that they're doing there is making sure that people are placed over profits That's right. and we need to make sure that happens here right. people over profits All day. people over profits 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 You know why? Why? Because I got a little boy. That's right. He just turned five years old. That's right. I have a daughter. Yeah. She's 12. Yeah. I have a 17 year old son. Yeah. And I have a husband. Right. And they matter to me. That's right. And your families matter to me too. That's right. Your children matter to me. That's right. Your loved ones matter to me. So we have to do this. We have to stop. Allowing these people to get away with putting money and interest over people. That's right. That's right. People over profits. People over profits. That's right. People over profits. People over profits. People over
Just because I don't trust you, there has to be some reason for you to treat me as a threat. When I'm treated as a threat, just because you don't know, I got pushed down by an officer, and I was trying to file a complaint. He pushed me down and pulled the, pulled the, the zip tie on a big old can of mace, and his exact response was, I didn't know what you were going to do. That is not justification for violence. I can tell you. I, I can tell you. He got in my trouble for it. I, I can tell you for specific, whatever that means. Specific I know which. How do I know which? Just like you're saying, we don't know who has a gun in their pocket. How do I know which one of you guys is, is good and which is bad? If I have something like that happen, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know how to answer that for you, sir. I don't know. Okay, if I had that answer, I wouldn't need to do this job. I agree. Because I'd be doing something else. But I'm a whole lot more money. I, I'm not against you guys in general. I'm against what happened to me in West Park and what I see other people tell me. The same thing has happened to them. I had it firsthand. And the charge I was arrested on was a DUI, and I was standing on a corner. Yes, a DWI, it was the Sheriff's Department. He put it in the computer, he took me down there during the mugshot, he said, driving while intoxicated. I went yesterday. Uh, the prosecutor said the facts don't matter, the laws don't matter, I'm the only one that matters. And the fact that you're here. He said in front of the courtroom. So, I did. He told me, he told my attorney that. My two attorneys. Uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, that's why I'm upset. Um, so that's why we have to check. Yeah, I have to check with them and make sure that they're okay. I'm or, just, I'm just saying, like, let's just step away from here. Yeah, yeah, we look at the video and so go, what, what happened? You can go down and grab it. Right? Like, like, all of you guys, you can go down and buy the video tape. Well, the reason I came into that was because the same, all we were doing, all we were doing was sitting, circling the parking lot, right? We were just sitting here. On the property, yeah, we're not allowed to be on, right? But so, so were we, we up there interfering with your No, protests. no, I'm not saying we're interfering. Right. But if you're out there, what happens? We're working in off duty capacity. Some people are up there. Some people say they were able to do all that. Did you have other groups come up there to interfere? Yeah. Get I, don't even come, I don't come up to Westbury Green. No. I come up here but just to is, hang out and see what's going on. If there would have been, if there me. would have been people yeah. that came up here to interfere with you guys, the sheriff's department is a whole we would have been up there. I agree. But that's why we're here. There was a case of BD officer involved in my arrest. I don't know who the was. Which is what we. Do, uh, all the time because we have protests all over the city. 
had the majority of the protests. If you know about it, we're there. No, I appreciate that. I've just never personally seen it. I've always happened to be. I've go out to the end of my job. They have tried to cite it a more of a negative rhetoric because they were either annoyed that they had to with him or they were sure it's hard. They were talking about it somewhere else. And they weren't happening right there. And their self-interest was to get back home. I hear that all the time. Like police, like, hey, so, I get a on me, they're like, I just want to get the back home. So, let me ask you a question. So today, by you guys being up there protesting, us sitting in the parking lot, was that in any way instigated? No, no. I didn't say you guys instigated anything. No, that, that is not a claim. I'm saying for the future, right, like, it, it, will, it will be, I think, more comforting for protesters. We just didn't, we're here? No, no, no. It would be more comforting for protesters if, if one officer came up and said, hey, uh, I want to do, like, so uh, normally, normally with when we have a protest that's going to be an organized group that's going to show up at a protest, normally, if we know they're going to march or something, we will we'll come up and we'll make take contact with the organizer and just say, look, just so you know, you can't, you got to stay on the sidewalk if you don't have a permit, you can't march in the street, you got to stay off private property. Today when we showed up, as soon as we stepped in to make contact with some fresh, you guys all went over and left the property and went up on the sidewalk to protest. So as far as the fact that you didn't have any Contact. There was no, there, there wasn't really a need to contact you guys. Though. You guys I'm left their property on your own, I'm saying and then the visual, we just sat in our car. The visual, like, if it's about, yeah. if you, if it's about yeah. the visual yeah. from from yeah. that perspective, yeah. right now. I, well, that's not the problem. I don't like, I don't care that they're here. But if we're saying that you're here to protect our rights and you're here for us and them, then like you contact them, but you don't contact us. I'm saying in the you guys left. You guys left because on your we own. know the rules. Right. So then, why do we need to contact? Because you're here, you guys like, are doing to, what you're. You guys are doing just if fine. If there were, not, if there was to be an issue, who would property? be the contact person for us to say like, we would hey, come we up. think that this would this would have been the thing. Had, you only come up you, in the instance of a problem, yeah, unless it's a business. Let me, let me finish. Had you guys stayed out on the sidewalk in front of Sunfresh, mm -hmm. after we made contact with Sunfresh. We would have come out and said, just so you know, if you guys want to protest, that's fine. Sunfresh doesn't want you on that property. And this is private yeah, well, property. Hang on, let me finish. Hey, you're not. You're hey, asking me a my question. My name is Sergeant. I know, but you're asking me a question. You're asking. But this is the thing. I hear what you're saying. You say you didn't contact us because you're not. You don't want to. You don't want to let me finish. You're saying the same thing over and over. No. This person. What I said is, we went in to contact Sunfresh. When we went in to contact Sunfresh. You guys knew you couldn't be on private property. So you went ahead and walked off private property and started protesting on your own, doing what you were legally allowed to do. So well, I don't know the details of that one, so I couldn't tell you one way or the other on it. That was the details. You got them now. Well, <laughs> had you come back on Everybody tells details a little bit different. So you we, didn't, we, didn't, we didn't get out of our cars and come stand up there next to you. Right. We just want to make sure that you guys can... Nobody's trying to really listen. You're trying to figure out what, their what to do. Had something happened? No, I'm saying for the company, why would you offer to build a relationship between? Because when you stand up there, it feels a lot different than having 12 cop cars behind you and no cop is coming up to say hello or anything. It doesn't. It doesn't. So the police only contact you if something is going wrong. No, but you were doing it. There wasn't a need to contact you. And I think that's where the disconnect is. I'm saying I would actually appreciate a police officer coming up and saying, "From what?" What's going on up there? Without I had my window down. I agree with everything that we can. It was clearly obvious the police are not lying by some members of the group. So they're really. Yeah. So I that's mean, they're up there, F the police, this and that. The guy, that guy with the cap on. He well, clearly hates the police. So yeah, I can't help that. He clearly has separated himself. But the problem becomes group when we when we come up to contact whoever, then we bring everybody in. And we start, and then it's blah, 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 blah from the side. Not the people that are organizing yeah, trying to do the legal protest. It's, he, he hasn't been up there for one minute of the I'm protest. He's been here to stir trouble with the police. That's all he's been doing. That's why we're just ignoring him. But when we come up and he starts in, we were getting ready. Myself and another captain walked into Sunfresh to let them know what was going on to find out what their position was. And we were getting ready to come out and talk, and we walked out, and everybody's gone. They're up there. So there was no reason for us to come up and talk. I understand why you feel like there was no reason. I don't know how any of that kind of stuff works, but that's it's all civil war. It's not the universe. It's just around <laughs> profiling. And I, try and, I try and worry about what I do and let other people do their job. Seem protected by the police, the because the police are now on yeah. the same property. For community relationship building, I would suggest okay. that at some point, like I understand why you why you say you don't want to interact with that guy. I understand that. 
there yeah, there are zero. 40 other people yeah, here like just even inviting one person down to make friendly contact is better than having ambiguous visualizations of, of an armed force so normally standing to, and, and that looks like you're protecting the private interest. That's all I'm saying. Whether that was your intentions or not, I'm telling you how it feels on top of that hill. Well, here's the deal. First of all, all those police cars were parked here before you guys ever went up to that corner. I, yeah. So they're prepared. we didn't move. We came here in preparation to stand on to make sure there was well about because six of those cars pulled up and parked next to each other. Because the initial so was, the initial thing was the what the intel that we got was it was gonna be a bum rush store and shut it down. It wasn't anything about a peaceful protest. It was about a, we're going to shut it down. Now, normally what we do in these situations is, yes, we figure out who the who the person is that's actually hosting the event, and we will make contact with them. That's what the captain and I, the other captain and I went in. We made contact with the business because we knew it was going to be a problem with the business. Then we were going to come out and contact them. Everybody's gone. Now, you talk about developing friendly community relationships. Mm -hmm. When I've got a group of 25 people up there and they're all saying F the police. That's an exaggeration. You pointed out one example of a guy. standing on a PA system. She said, fuck, run fresh. She was going on about the police. She never said F the police. She was going on about the police. Police, because, because the visualization at this point is that the police are protecting the private company. That's what I'm saying here. When you go to church and you say amen, make sure you tell them, have the sun fresh is racially profiling people yes. all right because churches shouldn't support this story either nobody who calls themselves a loving christian should support racial profiling or, or people who harass people the other thing we demand is also we're not letting the security company off the hook they need to apologize as well and we want a meeting with them as well there will be other things coming down the line, so make sure that you keep following us on Facebook. Like these bastards behind us, because they following us on Facebook too. <laughs> I'm not I'm not confused. But we'll also have some private meetings where we can do some stuff and plan. So make sure that you stay tuned with us to find out what's coming next. Make sure that you get involved with an organization that's proactively doing something in the community. Hi, um, my name is Natalie. Um, I'm with Showing Up for Racial Justice. Uh, and I'm also a neighbor. I live just a few blocks down the street here, just down 41st Street. And what has happened here at the store is really troubling and um, also not surprising. <laughs> and as a neighbor and as a community member, we need to be able to do better. I heard about the privatization of, this, of the city streets or of, of Westport streets a little bit ago and I was outraged and then I lost track of it. And then today, city council is voting on it. And what they're voting on, what they're talking about today is to further ingrain a culture of white supremacy that exists yeah. in Westport. Yes. What we saw happen, what has been going on here at Sunfresh with racial profiling, but then what has been going on in Westport, what the business owners have been driving through checkpoints, what they want to continue to have more control over who gets to walk down the street in yeah. Westport. Yeah. And it's under the guise of safety. But safety for who? Safety for for their profits. They're trying to protect their profits under, under the guise, under the proxy of safety. But they're, they're making decisions for who, and about who, and who will it impact, and is it actually gonna make our community more safe? No, it, it won't. There is, they, let's not be confused about why they're right. doing this. It is to, to control, to increase their power. Yes. And they already have a lot of power. Yeah, and now, that, now they're using city council to give them more power to hand away, hand yes. away for free public property no. no this is not right no we have to do better and as as a neighbor as a community member here i'm here today to commit to do more to fight this so we'll go forward all right thank you thank you so much for speaking on that um we have to do more this this 
to privatize street, come on now, privatize this area so that they can then hand select who's allowed to come in and who's allowed to go? No, we cannot allow that to happen. Is there anybody else? Yes. Hello, uh, my name is Natasha from the Progressive Youth Organization Proletarian, Proletarian Feminist Committee. Um, so I'm out here to, to talk to you guys a little bit about defending ourselves in our community. Um, there's a lot of ways that you can take action to defend yourself and the people that you love. Um, and, one of the, and one of those ways is actually learning self-defense. Um, so we have every Saturday from around 12 to 3, um, our self-defense class, it is free and open to the community. Um, we, all, all we ask is that you message us on Facebook to let you to, to, to ask us about it so that we can give you the location. Um, and we don't also, we don't only teach about self-defense. So you can use self-defense in a lot of situations, but we all know that there are situations where we know fighting back is probably not the best option. So what we also do is we teach about situational awareness and de-escalation tactics. So these tactics will help you get through situations if you're confronted by the police or maybe someone, um, you know that if you fight back that it's not gonna end well for you. So we can help you uh, guys learn that confidence in yourself and your body. Um, and so we really encourage people, regardless of who you are, black, brown, white, uh, LGBTQ, it doesn't matter. If you feel like you want to learn to defend yourself and de-escalate in situations when you need to, please hit us up. We have flyers. Go to our Facebook page. We would love to have you guys out every single Saturday. Um, uh, brother, come up here and talk to us about who we should be supporting when it comes to food. So in all, in all honesty, um, there, there's a lot you could do to, to promote food sovereignty, especially for black and brown folks. Uh, one thing uh, that you'll notice if you go to a lot of local grocery stores is that, uh, that a lot of uh, brown folks particularly don't, don't shop at, at grocery stores like this. Uh, for, the, for the most part, they, they support, uh, as a unit, certain grocery stores. I know for a fact that I have neighbors that will drive all the way to 18th Street. Of course, they have the privilege and the ability to do that. Um, if, if you can, shop at farmer's markets. If you can, support uh, local growers. Uh, local, um, you know, there's there's uh, the KC Food Circle uh, is is a great um, is a great resource. Uh, the KC Food Circle actually has. He, that's a great question. He, someone asked, how do we get to those people? So the KC Food Circle actually has a website and a Facebook page that you can you can join. Uh, and you can look on there and you can ask questions to find uh, a local local grocery. There's Leon's uh, Thriftway, which I, I highly recommend supporting if you can. It is it is uh, sort of a drive, but uh, some of the, sometimes we lose focus on uh, on what we're trying to accomplish by losing focus of, of the sacrifices that we don't make. Um, for me, I used to travel to uh, three or four different grocery stores to get what I need. I had to go one place to get organic produce, another place to get GMO-free meat, and another place to, you know, get the rest of the things that I need. Um, and that that place would include include shopping here. But I stopped shopping here just to base uh, on the fact that the way that they treat treat me when I come in here, um, you know, just as another number. And I have I've had friends that work here. I've had neighbors that work here. And you know, you do what you got to do. But at the end of the day, it's about Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice, and, and and again, like my sister Justice said, if if you can do it, if you can do it, do it. You know, but even if you can't do it, um, you know, maybe limit yourself to to just what uh, think to yourself. Go home, and that's part of what this process is: is go home and actually think to yourself, what can you go without? Where else can you shop? Where else, you know, uh, collectively, if you. Uh, do things like CSA, uh, I know, know places like Door to Door Organics, which is a, a personal competitor of mine, went out of business, but that doesn't mean that there's not people in, in Kansas City growing food. Uh, you can grow food for yourself. There are there are a lot, and and the thing about it, the more you support local growers, the more food that they'll they'll grow. I know personally myself, I've grown 2,500 pounds of food, uh, 2,500 pounds of food this year, and if I if I had two or three more hands, I could have grown double that. And if I had 10 hands, I could have grow I could have grown four times that amount. And that's not only growing it, that's giving it away. So uh, we have to think, you know, and. 
that that part part of my 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 thinking is that I've I asked a lot to people to come and, and volunteer a day, um, and uh, volunteer their time to help me, and I had to self reflect, and sometimes that's asking a lot of people to you know sacrifice their time when and their energy, and so for me I I had to self create, I had to self reflect and go back and say maybe I should only ask instead of a whole day maybe only ask for 30 minutes or an hour, and still and still give that produce and still show that love but we have to we have to re we have to re think the way that we think because we're not thinking on um, on uh, uh, an ideology of food sovereignty. Food security is good, but food sovereignty is is where it is, especially when we're talking about uh, land, the what belongs in the commons, the land belongs in the commons, uh, when we have things like borders and ownership, when we have uh, indigenous, brown, black, native folks, aboriginal folks fighting for land, fighting for for uh, not only e uh, equality but equity of land that's where we have uh, have, our, have an issue when we have people quoting people like Martin Luther King in his pre-Vietnam days and his, not his post-Vietnam days when we're talking about love and we're talking about love love wins over over anger and love conquers all we also have to remember that he said that the United States is the greatest purveyor of violence and that uh, and the United the United States has no conscience you know, we have to remember those things. He was also marching for poor people. The, the, the week that the United States government murdered Martin Luther King, which is documented, which is, is proven that the U.S. government did, in fact, murder Martin Luther King Jr., he was marching for poor people. He was marching with garbage workers. And he said that he was, he was fighting to get reparations for us. So if you're going to quote Martin Luther King, make sure that you're quoting the piece about reparations, because reparations is what's going to, going to give the equity back to the people because the land belongs in the commons. And lastly, I want to say black woman led leadership is also going to set us free. You know, uh, unless, unless, unless we start listening to the, the, the matriarchs and the, and the, the femme identified folks and the women who are on the front lines, the marginalized folks who are, who have been fighting and who have been speaking up and who have been here for and with us, uh, North Kansas City beverage Country, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, they, we are not going to get free unless, unless all of us are free. None of us are free. So we have to remember that. Uh, that's that goes for marginalized folks. That's trans folks. That's queer folks. That's same gender loving yeah. folks. That's all folks. All folks are uh, until all folks are free. None of us are free. That's right. So that's what I was like. Black love, black joy manifest.